she left Uganda on the 12th of December 2019 to Jeddah in Saudi Arabia to meet with her new boss and his family. It was said that every day from the moment Judith left Uganda to Jeddah, she kept in contact with her family. She chatted with her brother regularly on WhatsApp and kept in touch with other family members via phone calls. However, barely three months later, the family stopped hearing from her. She wasn't taking her calls. She wasn't replying her chat. At a point, her phone went off and her family were instantly worried. Her elder brother, Robert Kadishi, soon remembered that Judith gave him the phone number of her boss before she went off the network. And so Judith's brother kept calling the boss to know what's up with his sister. At the initial time, it was said the boss wasn't taking his calls, but eventually Judith's boss would answer Judith's brother and tell him that Judith had been in an accident. The employer, whose name is Mr. Sahad Dafa, continued to tell Judith's brother that Judith was in critical condition, but she was receiving treatment at a hospital in Saudi Arabia there. Judith's family were not satisfied, and so they requested that Mr. Sahad Dafa send them pictures of Judith in the hospital, in the critical condition that he claimed she was in. But Mr. Sahad did not send the pictures. In fact, when Judith's brother continued persisting, calling Mr. Sahad constantly, chatting him up on WhatsApp, it was said that Judith's boss, Mr. Sahad, blocked Judith's family, causing them to be even more frustrated than they already were. By this time when all of this were happening, it was not a new information that certain people who go abroad to get jobs end up coming back home dead. And so, the family of Judith were worried for her. In fact, they feared that Judith might have been killed. I mean, what stops Judith's employer from sending her family pictures of her in the hospital? If you say she was in an accident, show proof. When they asked him for proof, he blocked them. And of course, the family knew that it was bigger than what he was saying. Now, Judith's family, unable to reach her nor her boss, decided to go to the agency that recruited her to Saudi Arabia to work as a maid. The agency is called the Nile Treasure Gate Company. It's located somewhere in Kampala in Uganda. They are known for exporting domestic workers across the globe. They were the ones who recruited Judith Nachintu. They were the ones who organized her papers, found her the job and processed everything for her to go there to work. And of course the family knew they would be the only one to have a proper answer as to what is going on with Judith in Saudi Arabia. When Judith's family contacted now Treasure Gate, the company told them that they were aware of Judith's situation. They confirmed to Judith's family that Judith was indeed in an accident. But they assured them that Judith was receiving treatment. They told the family that officials in the Ugandan embassy in Saudi Arabia had gone to visit Judith in the hospital. They even claimed that a lot of groups had contributed money for the well-being and hospital bills of Judith Nachintu in Saudi Arabia. But for Judith to come back home, that would be a problem because around this time, the COVID-19 pandemic was at its peak. Remember Judith left in 2019, around December, and that was when the pandemic became a problem to the world. So apparently because of the pandemic, Judith could not come back to Uganda to receive treatment closer to her family. So all through 2020, Judith was in Saudi Arabia receiving treatment from the injuries she sustained during her accident. It was in October of 2021 that Judith's family got the phone call that Judith was arriving in Uganda in a moment. When Judith arrived in Uganda, the family were not exactly allowed to see her at first. It was a Nile treasure gate that took her to a hospital for medical checkup. They wanted to run a complete test on her before they returned her back to her family. And that was what they did. After they finished running all the tests and probably checking if she had COVID and all of those things, Judith was eventually handed to her family. So for the first time in almost two years, Judith's family got to see her in the most horrible condition. The right side of her body had been paralyzed. She couldn't talk properly, nor could she walk. Although it's been said that they have been briefed regarding the condition before she came, but you know, seeing it in person is going to give them a whole nother feeling. They were told it's as a result of the accident. However, when Judith's family took her home, they saw a very strange mark on her stomach. Upon further observation, they realized that she had had an operation. When they asked Judith about the operation, Judith told the family that one time when she was in Saudi Arabia, her employer, Mr. Sahad Dafa, told her that they were going to the hospital 
to get vaccination against the COVID-19 virus. She then said that when she got to the hospital, she fell unconscious. And by the time she woke up, she noticed the mark on her stomach. And when she asked her employer and the doctors around that what happened to her, nobody could give her a good answer. Nobody could give her a good explanation. I'm sure she probably knew what had happened to her, but for some reason, there is not much she could do. After all, she was grateful to be alive. But that's not the problem now, because you see, when she first came to Uganda, the first test that the Nile Treasure Gate carried for her claimed in their report that Judith's organs were intact. So upon the family seeing a mark on Judith's stomach and hearing her story, they decided to run a private test for Judith, only for this private test to confirm that Judith's right kidney has been stolen because clearly it was not in her body and obviously judith said she did not give anybody permission to take her right kidney so did it now get company know that judith's organ was missing when they ran the test or did they not know because eventually the family will reach out to the Nile Gates company again to tell them that, hey, our daughter's right kidney is missing. But in you people's medical report, you claimed all her organs were intact. And it was said that the people in the company were like, oh, ha, ah, wow, wow, we did not see that. Oh, how come? Me, how? They were all acting surprised at the news that her organ was missing. It was at this point that her family knew that this now Treasure Gates company might have had a hand in her organ going missing. Instantly, the police were involved and four officials at the company were arrested and arrived in court to answer for the missing kidney of Judith Nachintu. The family accused them that they conspired with people in Saudi Arabia to harvest their daughter's organs. Because how else would they run a scan on her when she came to Uganda and not know that her organ was missing? Even going as lying in their report that all her organs were intact. This clearly proves to the family that these people knew what happened to Judith Nachintu. At the same time all of this is going on in Uganda, the Saudi Arabian government was informed of this situation. Because clearly the organ was invested in Saudi Arabia. So the people in Uganda needed to let Saudi Arabia know what they had done to one of their own. And immediately it was said the Saudi Arabian government began investigation. Was it really the accident that was the cause of Judith's stroke? Or was it due to the illegal harvesting of her kidney? Was she truly in an accident? And was it the plan all along for her to go to Saudi Arabia to have her organs stolen from her? Because don't forget, it was just barely three months after she left Uganda that this said accident happened in Saudi Arabia. So, what really happened to Judith Nachintu? After a concrete investigation was concluded, it was confirmed that Judith was indeed in an automobile accident. She was in the vehicle with her employer and her employer's family when a truck collided with their vehicle. It was even confirmed that two of the employer's children died in the accident. Judith was said to have been among the survivors, but she suffered a trauma to her stomach that left her in the critical condition. It was during the treatment that she suffered the stroke that affected the right side of her body. So now we've gotten the fact that she was indeed in an accident. So when was the kidney harvested? And whose idea was it? A particular source claimed that Judith's organ was harvested in March of 2020. But that was about the same time it was said that accident took place. But when Judith was asked, she did say that her employer took her to the hospital to get a COVID-19 vaccination. And that was when she woke up and noticed that she had been operated on. So if she was being taken to the hospital for COVID-19 vaccination, that could have been around October because it was around October that it was said the vaccine was approved. So obviously it couldn't have been March, which means her organ may have been invested towards the end of 2020. So obviously there is only one person here to blame, which is Mr. Sahad Dafa, our employer. He was the one who took her there under the guise to get vaccination. So there is no how he wouldn't have known that her kidney was being stolen. But the big question is, did the Nile Treasure Gate know about it? And did they conspire with her boss to steal her organ? In January of 2022, it was announced by a Saudi Arabian court that Judith should be awarded the sum of 70,000 US dollars as compensation for the accident she suffered in Saudi Arabia. The court found her employer 100% guilty in causing the accident that affected her so badly. And the court ordered the boss to pay her the sum of 70,000 US dollars equivalent. 
Now this might seem like a big victory. In fact, it is a big victory for Judith Machinto. I'm sure the money is going to go a long way for her. And honestly, she deserves the money. But the only problem is the court did not directly blame her employer for harvesting her organs. It was said that the court held him responsible for causing the accident that gave her stroke. And according to some sources, blamed him for taking her to the hospital where her organ was stolen. So this boss was not directly blamed for stealing the organ. So if the boss is not taking full blame for harvesting her organs specifically, what does that mean? I mean, I get it, she's getting paid millions. But somebody needs to be punished for stealing another human being's organ. But apparently, it's still going to be a mystery as to who stole her organ and why. I'm sure there would be some doctors and nurses and even surgeons involved because the hospital where her organ was stolen happens to be a very notable hospital in Saudi Arabia. So if such a thing can happen in this hospital, I believe the Saudi Arabian government should do more than just compensating Judith Natching to. These people need to be investigated. Who knows how many more illegal organ harvesting is going on in this big hospital. Currently, the officials of the now treasure gate are still in custody their case is still in court as at the time of making this video and the accusation that they conspired with people in saudi arabia to harvest judith's organ is still on them they have denied having any involvement in her organ disappearance and they are clearly maintaining their innocence in court i guess the only problem now is why they would notice that her organ